YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video man before we get into this y'all ever had them dreams where it they just feel so real that happened to me this morning well last night slash this morning had a dream that felt so real I woke up all like sad and stuff I'm like man it was crazy but anyway uh the Ravens they uh very busy morning for them making a lot of announcements um, by the time you see this video, you'll probably have watched the uh, Rashad Bateman and Marlon Humphrey uh, Studio 44 interview. They announced the Brent Urban signing as well, making it official, even though it was kind of like already official. But they announced it. Um, but they also announced that they are signing Navy linebacker Diego Fago. Now, this was one that had been announced already that he was one of the undrafted uh, rookie free agents that they had signed but this makes it official because i mean amika mezzi he was also one of the undrafted rookie free agents that the ravens had signed and we saw how that ended up going uh, i guess he turned down the ravens he was like no nah, i'm going back home and he signed with the uh, the panthers i believe so hopefully it works out well for him and he can go do his thing and hopefully make the team uh, but anyway with diego for go um, he was somebody that I didn't know anything about him, had heard about him, uh, but just was naive to his game. So what do you do when you're naive to something? Well, you try to find out about it. Uh, so I watched his game versus uh, the Cincinnati, I was about to say the Cincinnati Bengals, um, versus the Cincinnati, uh, the team, that's where Chris Moore went to and Sauce Gardner. What? I cannot think of their team. Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Bearcats, Bearcats, there we go, Bearcats. Anyway, I, I, anyway, um, and I, I watched that game just to see, all right, what's he like? Um, and of course, y'all give me an input on him and what you think about him as well, but this is what I got. So for him as a linebacker, uh, the speed, he's not, he don't got no crazy speed. Um, his speed didn't jump out to me like, oh man, that dude. Ooh, he's a burner. And I know he's a linebacker, so linebackers don't really have to be burners or anything like that. But his speed didn't jump out to me. Uh, what did jump out to me uh, was his confidence, though. He is somebody that is, whatever he's doing, he's like, his confidence level is on 1,000. And he believes that what he's doing is the right thing. Uh, and a lot of times he, would, he, he, he has a very good, he's, he's very good at tracking the ball. And I don't mean like tracking like the deep ball like them cornerbacks be doing, but like tracking like like diagnosing plays and whatnot, seeing where the ball is going. Uh, because with who was Cincinnati quarterback? Was it Ritter? I think it was Ritter. Um, but when they would do little RPOs and what's that, he wasn't biting on none of that stuff. Uh, and he would always be able to see, okay, did the quarterback keep the ball? Oh, no, he handed the ball off, and he would always follow where the ball went. Um, so to me, that shows that he – He's very smart. He got a lot of football smarts, uh, and he does a lot of film study. Um, he's somebody, and, and, you know, Raven's like, this is them all day. When I saw this, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 this is him all day. He was out there. <laughs> he was out there on first down. He was out there on second down. He was out there on third down. I know you're saying, oh, uh, okay, that's basic. Uh, that, that's not a big deal. But he was out there on fourth down as well. And what I mean when I say out there on fourth down, when uh, their, their team forced a punt, he will stay right out there on, and be on special teams. Uh, so that the fact that he plays on defense and special teams, oh, you know, Ravens, little ding, 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 they they going crazy for that one. Um, another thing too, um, he is somebody again, Ravens all day again. Uh, he lined up at inside linebacker. And he was in coverage a little bit. They played a lot of zone coverage in that game specifically, but he lined up an inside linebacker. But he also lined up as a pass rusher. So he lined up on the edge. He lined up like an outside linebacker. And he was rushing the passer too. So it's like the more you can, again, Ravens little antlers. They love it. They love it. Uh, but seriously, that is, the more you can do, uh, the better. The, if you are a well-rounded player, that's great. That's great. And him, again, being on the Ravens team, being on Ravens defense, and again, that's their specialty. That's their bread and butter. So, like, you got to feel like, all right, and, and he's a linebacker. And again, I know different people feel different ways about the current group, the, the current group of the linebackers right now for the Ravens. But me, it's still, it's a big area of concern for me. 
big area. And I know you can play a lot of dime defense where you got a safety in the box next to the linebacker and whatnot. But still, linebacker is an area of concern for me. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. But him being a linebacker, he I think that he has a significant chance uh, of making the roster again because he's a defensive player. And that's the Ravens. That's where they value what they value the most. Um, and again, that's been their mo since not since the very beginning, but after the first couple of years, it, it became them. Um, but anyway, um, with him, he yeah, they they had him blitzing, and like again, the speed. He ain't got no crazy speed. He ain't like slow, but he ain't got no crazy speed. Uh, but again, that confidence when he blitzed. Like, he shot straight through. Now, it did end up being a touchdown on that play. I think it went to uh, the, the Bearcats tight end. I think it was, like, number 81. He was balling that game, as a matter of fact. But, anyway, the blitz, it was a nice blitz because he was running, and he got them, like, them high shoulder pads. I think when you got them high shoulder pads on, it kind of make you look like uh, – I think kind of make you look a little bit slower, but it, it's all good, man. Um, but, yeah, he's a short tackler. He ain't somebody with people breaking a bunch of tackles off of him. And I did see him, too. He reminded me sort of of uh, Chuck Clark um, because I saw him throughout the game. He was he was communicating a lot uh, with his teammates. So he was telling them where to go and whatnot, telling them, I guess, what he saw from the offense. There was a lot of communication pre-snap with his teammates. So that shows me a couple of things. Again, it shows me the film study that he he recognizes different plays and sets from the offense and whatnot, but uh, it also shows leadership to me. It shows leadership. And it shows that he's somebody that is responsible uh, and willing to, excuse me, and willing to really step up uh, for the guys around him. Again, <laughs> Ravens and the so yeah, that was, so I, I I like what I saw. I like what I saw. Looked like a solid linebacker. And again, for him, I think the biggest role for him uh, initially will be special teams. Special teams because again, Ravens got Patrick Queen. They got Josh Bynes. Uh, they got Malik Harrison. Um, and Malik Harrison, he probably be on special teams a little bit too. Uh, but those are gonna be the guys in front of him. Um, and of course Bowser and whatnot. But for him being well rounded. Being able to play different positions and do different things, that means as a backup, you can back up different people. It's not like, all right, you're just strictly an inside linebacker, so you're going to be backing up Josh Bynes, or you're going to be backing up Patrick Queen, and that's it. So you just, if one of those two get tied or it's a blowout game and you get in, okay, cool, but those are going to be the only guys you're backing up. No. You could back up a, a, a Tyus Bowser, back up a Odafe away, back up. Probably Justin Houston when he comes back officially. Uh, but you, yeah, so that that's that's that, man. So you, the, the more you can do, the more opportunity you could possibly get. Now, uh, when we look at uh, his numbers, his numbers, uh, 2018, he was a freshman. Uh, he played in eight games, had eight tackles. Well, he had eight solo tackles and eight assists. So he's like, eight, eight, eight. You eight yet? But anyway, shout out to Lamar. Uh, and he had one and a half tackles for loss. So nothing crazy freshman year. But then sophomore year, 2019, I guess he, he's like, these Ravens going off in 2019? So I'm going to go off too because I want to be with them one day. Uh, but he uh, played in 13 games, had 52 solo tackles, 48 assisted tackles, and that equals 100. He had 100 tackles, 12 tackles for a loss, five and a half sacks, and, and a pick. Oh, that was a pick six, by the way. Okay, nice. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, everything just jumped up. But then one thing that I see from his numbers ever since then, like, because if you look, that, that's when he got more consistent. Ever, ever since sophomore year, that's when stuff just kept jumping. Uh, f junior year, he played in nine games. So he played in less games. So he had less tackles. He had 72 tackles. But he had 11 tackles for a loss. So you see that uh, in 2019, he had 12 tackles for a loss. In 2020, he had 11 tackles for a loss. And then 2021, he had 11 tackles for a loss again. Uh, and that was off of 94 total tackles. So he was like, hey, no matter how many tackles I get, whether it's a higher number or it's a lower number, I'm, I'm tackling somebody in the backfield. I'm making plays in the backfield. So that, that's nice to know. That's nice to see. 
Um, and as far as the sacks, again, his his sophomore year he had five and a half, uh, and then his junior year he had three, uh, and then his senior year he only had one. Um, he did get an interception though, senior year. But yeah, that that consist his biggest thing where he's consistent at is the tackles for a loss. So again, to me, that goes back to what we were saying earlier about how he is a student of the game. Um, if he's recognizing plays and diagnosing plays, like, oh, okay, yeah, I know, I know exactly what they're getting ready to do. So he can be on it, uh, and that can make whatever play he's about to make that much easier because he's seen it coming. He knows what's on the way. And, and when, you, when, when you study anything, studying it prepares you for what's to come. And that's in any situation. It doesn't have to just be film study. It can be in school. It can be literally anything. Even if you study people, you can have one of your friends like, man, oh, I already know. They, every time when they're in this situation, oh, they always ask me for it. Dog, oh, every single time. And I know, ah, oh, but oh, yeah, they're probably going to do it again. They get in that situation. What do they do? They ask you for it. Yeah, oh, I knew it was coming because I studied them. But anyway, y'all get what I'm saying. So, yeah, shout out to Diego for go. Um, yeah, again, again, like I said, I think he does like have a legitimate chance of uh, making the Ravens roster. And he ain't had to go too far. He ain't had to go too far because he played at Navy. So he right up the street. Anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We out.